Okay, so our game for today is called Self Portrait, and okay. we this. are going to hold a paper plate against our foreheads, and we have to draw a picture of ourselves. So everyone, do, do we have a count on this? Like, how long do we have? Like, um, not long. Not so long. Just draw fast. Not long. This is also oh bad. So when do we start? Are we starting? Yeah. This All is, right. This oh, is, oh my gosh, this is man. opposite. I can't see. And then, and then. Here we go. <laughs> now I got a big circle. I. One I have eye. No idea. This is backwards. Nose, I just made myself a beard. Nose. Big smile. <laughs> big smile. What even? This is so hard. Uh, Widow's Peak eyes right yet. here. Widow's I Peak. Can't that. I can't Look, see Look at the camera and then it's going a different way. I know. Here we go. And then some lots of hair. Are we done? Are we looking at them? How are we doing? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's definitely me. Don't what? you think? That's definitely Guys, me. Because I have three legs. What is this? <laughs> Well, that was good. Oh my gosh. I, my nose is very like wow. defined there. All right, it's let's, very, let's get started. Right. <laughs> the hair is pretty accurate. <laughs> <laughs> like well, good morning. My name is Father David Kidd. My name is Lauren Strauss. And I'm Athena Getzi, and welcome to Quarantine. Um, today, I want to start with uh, talking about Awaken Nation. So if you really are enjoying um, what we're doing here and any of the shows, but obviously particularly ours because, you know, we're the best, um, this is a way for you to help support us. So you can join Awaken Nation if you go to awakencatholic.org slash donate. It literally can just cost you a, like a cup of coffee. That's it. Um, and then if you struggle with daily prayer or daily meditations, the Hollow app is for you. And actually, if you follow the link at our website, you are also supporting us. And who doesn't like to support and get a gift? You get a free month of premium by following the link at our website. That's a sweet deal. Thanks, it Athena. Is. You're welcome. Well, so today we are talking about good, healthy dating or to sum it, hashtag goals. Goals. <laughs> So we're going to talk about dating today and what's the purpose of that, why do we date, um, and hopefully learn a little about dating. Yeah. Yeah. So did you guys, did you guys date in high school? Oh, good question. Not <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm not I, sure. I went, I think I went on more like homecoming, prom, yeah. Sadie's, um, dances, not formally dating actually till college. Okay. Yeah, I would also agree with that. I, they were like just weird relationships that <laughs> weren't really relationships, I, I guess. That. I feel that. Yeah. I it, mean, does fourth grade count? I mean, I did like. <laughs> I don't know, because if that counts, then my sixth grade counts. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that was uh, big. We got to hold hands during Did recess, you exchange so. gifts? There you go. We did not. Uh, well, we, we exchanged gifts. Yeah. But so. he skipped football at recess and held my hand. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That was a big deal. That counts. Um, oh, no. Goodness. So. Um, I asked that question because sometimes teens don't always like to listen to my dating advice because I was a weirdo and didn't date in high school. Like I okay. wasn't interested in it. Not at all. Um, I actually didn't start dating until I was in college and I've only had one boyfriend and I married him. Wow. So hot and heavy. Wow. Quick. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, for me, it was really easy to be friends with somebody and then know like, like I went in with the purpose of you date to get married. So even oh. in high school, that's what I thought about. Um, and so they call that courtship. Yes. yes. Yep. Okay. So I was like that weird high school girl that was like, could I, could I marry this person? Nope. Yeah. Okay. Um, and not my friends were not like that. Like it was very weird for them. They were like, what the heck are you doing? Um, but it paid off for me. Sure. Um, and part of that, like, I think, I think nowadays too, there's so much more pressure to date. Like, mm -hmm. like I felt that in high school mm. and I feel like it's gotten so much worse. Yeah, it definitely has. Um, yeah. I just think that people think that no matter like in high school, you just need to be with someone. And like, if you're not with someone, like you aren't cool or you're just like a loner or something. Um, and that's like super hard. And that's like a really big pressure because you feel like you, like if you aren't going on dates with someone or if you, um, I don't know, like aren't talking to a guy, it's just like, well, what are you doing then? Mm -hmm. And you know, part of dating is you're able to kind of figure out what qualities you would want in a future spouse, you know, like yeah. 
you start dating this person, you're like, you know what? I really like this about them. You know, like they're very kind and they're considerate, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. or they're lazy and a piece of crap, you know, and you're like, well, that's definitely what I don't want in a future right. spouse, yeah. you know? But the other thing too is like, even we don't have to necessarily rush into dating, you know, part of it is is developing good, healthy friendships, mm -hmm. right? That may actually lead into a dating relationship. But first and foremost, developing a friendship with that person. And, yeah. and I cannot tell you, cannot tell you how many times I've had high school girls tell me like, please teach me how to talk to the boys. Like I just want, <laughs> and like, okay, I, I can help you with that. I can make it less uncomfortable. But like, if you can't talk to them now as a friend, yeah. then like, even if I teach you, right, which I'm not an expert at, like that was not me in high school. But even if I teach you how to do that, or I help you like learn, I'm not like the purpose of that isn't so you can date, which I think is what like high schoolers think. Like if you are talking to the opposite gender, it must mean that you're interested in them and that you're going to date them. Like you can't just be friends. Mm -hmm. And I see like it's I mean, I think this pressure starts like in seventh grade. I remember doing games with our junior high and one of the games you had to hold hands. And um, it's a really crazy fun <laughs> game, but you have to like be held to your partner the whole time. And like I remember and like a boy and a girl were up front for this game holding hands and the whole room like exploded. And I was like, <laughs> what is happening? And they all like looked at me they're like they must like each other. And I was like, I literally am forcing them to do that. Like this is not their yeah. choice. They're mm -hmm. not, that's not the thing. Yeah. And I think we get so wrapped up in like that if we're going to talk to the opposite gender, it must mean that we want to date them. Like no matter yeah, what. Yeah. That's right. definitely not true because I, the majority, um, well, I would say a lot of my friends have been guys and like that's I just really enjoy being around guys and like having that friendship with them because it's like a completely different perspective about mm -hmm. things and um it's really awesome to like have that perspective in your life and um yeah like some some of those friendships have turned into relationships but like others like I just have really good guy friends in my yeah. life which is awesome yeah. and that's a good healthy thing you know being able to develop good friendships with members of the opposite sex is so healthy and good for us. Cause that's like half of the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you right. Yeah. And you have to remind yourself too, that like, it's not just about looks and, um, what you see on the outside. Like you really, that's very hard. Um, but you have to really look at their personality and their characteristics um, and not just dating to date, um, actually having a purpose. And like Athena was saying, like, dating for marriage. Yeah. And, you know, levels of friendship, um, there are many different, you know, like great philosopher Aristotle talks about this, right? And like we can, the very base level is kind of like purely utilitarian. Like I'm, I am friends with this person because they get me something, right? Which is pretty yeah. like base shallow way of being a friend, right? Don't do that. Don't do that. But another level you'd say is kind of a shared interest, right? Like we enjoy Mm -hmm. going out and playing football. We enjoy mm -hmm. going out and going to the movies. We enjoy reading books, whatever, whatever it may be, that we have this shared connection with, you know. And then it kind of moves kind of further into whether it's, you know, virtue, hopefully, like this person holds me accountable. Mm -hmm. This person challenges me to be a better person each mm -hmm. day. You know, and those are the type of friendships as you deepen that relationship with someone, hopefully that's the type of friendship you're developing with that person, person who challenges you to be a better person each and every day. And they do the same for you. And I yeah. think that there's a lot of pressure too that like, so not only are you supposed to date in high school, um, but like you're supposed to conform to, to what society says dating is one yeah. and two change so that you fit that relationship. Mm -hmm. Right. Because like, it's like a sin in high school to be single. Like, I don't know. I, yeah. It was bad before. Um, and it's been years, literally. Like I was with my high school senior cousin and I told him when I graduated and he was like, you're so old now. I was like, thank you. Great. Um, so it's been a while, but I remember there were pressures then and it was weird to be single. And it was like, people thought it was so weird that I never dated. Um, but I feel like now it's even worse. And one, dating doesn't have to look like every other high school relationship or every other relationship that you see in the media. Like um, the reason that some high school sweethearts stay together, I have um, a guy on my core team who is marrying his high school sweetheart next year. And like the reason that they stayed together is because it was virtuous. So even when they were um, struggling, whether that was with chastity or whatever, they were there for each other and building each other up Two. 
This is very important. They found things to do not together, right? Yeah. I can't tell you how mm. many like yeah. people that are dating do everything together, okay? If you are sharing a toothbrush with your boyfriend, <laughs> that's weird. Like, don't do that, okay? I, I have met people that do that. Wow. Like, oh. Teeth wouldn't Ugh. be very clean. That's for I, sure. have children with, I have children with my husband and I don't share a toothbrush. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but it is important to find things that you're interested in together, yeah. but also separate. And you have to live those separate lives because if not, um, your relationship isn't going to last. Yeah. It's and, super important to have those extra friends like you like the guy needs his friends. The girl needs her friends and you need to like let each other have girls and guys nights. Like let the guys yeah. hang out with the guys do, like do your thing. Like and if they don't have other guy friends or girlfriends, encourage them to make those mm-hmm. relationships yeah. Yeah. because part of it is like we become so dependent on that person sh- purely for emotional support. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, but so much. we also have to have good emotional support relationships with members of the same sex as well. Yeah. And, and a good uh, boyfriend and girlfriend will challenge each other to do that. Um, I think the other thing too, um, to your point, Athena too, is like the, the relationship can get to a point, dating relationship can get to a point where the person has like radically changed, mm-hmm. right? So much so that you're like, who are you? I don't even know who you are anymore because they've changed so much and not in a good way either. Right. Like there's certain points where they're like, mm. you know, you're more kind, you're considerate, yeah. you're happy, you know, you're, you're like loving. I never knew this about you. <laughs> right. But then we go this com- completely opposite end where it's like, we're mean, we're nasty. And it's like, where did that come from? Why did we conform in that way? Mm-hmm. Which isn't healthy either for you or the relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think another thing too, like if, yeah, that goes right along with that is like if you're losing friends too. Mm. Um, not just the fact that like you aren't even like hanging out with friends, but like you have those friends, but like you completely lost them at that point. Um, and listen to your friends. Like they they are very smart and they know you better than sometimes you know yourself or you see yourself. And so when mm-hmm. they are like, yeah. when they're finding things different about you or they're finding things out about your significant other that they're like, "Eh, it's a little weird. Like, I don't know if that's comfortable. Like be okay listening to that, be open to it and like take that into consideration. Cause I've seen too many, especially girls, because this, I feel like the pressure is more on girls to date, like Mm -hmm. guys, whatever. I feel like the, the pressure for them is more like, this sounds so bad, but more like how, how fast can you get around kind of thing. Yeah. Um, where like for girls, it's the opposite. You shouldn't do that, but you also should be dating someone at all times. Yeah. Um, and so then you see these these wonderful friendships fall apart between these young ladies because that guy has now been in the middle or they both have a crush on him. I've seen that where mm-hmm. like that destroys them. And like it's it is so important that friendships, no matter the gender, come first. Um, and yeah. also just your self-awareness, like you have you have to take steps back in that relationship um, to see like, is this good for me? Mm-hmm. Am I gl- growing closer to Christ or am I being pulled away from that? Um, you know, yeah. some red flags for me would be like, are they not coming to youth group with me? Like they're mm. they're defiant, like we're not yeah. doing that. Um, or are they not going to church? Um, are they not okay hanging out with my friends? I don't love all of my husband's friends, but I still take time to hang out with them because he loves them. So Mm -hmm. those things are really important that they're valuing what you value and putting in time, even if they absolutely hate it. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, good friendships with members of the same sex, we shouldn't let uh, another guy or another girl get in the middle of that relationship. It's not worth the fight, especially as teenagers, um, you know, getting into fights, getting into mean, nasty arguments over one guy or one girl is not worth breaking up that friendship mm-hmm. over. Um, so really encourage you to um, definitely mend those relationships. And and as we said previously in another episode, being willing to forgive one another um, and ask for forgiveness too, and to say, I'm sorry, and that I accept your apology. I think are powerful words, especially mm-hmm. those friendships that you've had already with um, with people of the same sex or of the or of the um, same gender. I think the other thing too is we notice um, in relationships where you are trying to develop this this good relationship maybe and you're maybe struggling with purity or mm-hmm. chastity and really encourage you in those moments to recognize when you're most likely to fall 
in those relationships, right? It's like starts out kissing and then it goes way beyond that, right? And it's like, maybe we shouldn't be alone together, right? Like, so number one, like if we're spending time with each other, make sure we're doing it with friends, mm -hmm. right? Or we're going out somewhere where we're in public, <laughs> you know, where we're just mm -hmm. not susceptible to those same temptations. Um, and you can help each other with that. You know, one says, hey, let's go out to such, such pizza place. Great, that's awesome, you know? Or, hey, let's just go back to our parents' house where no one's there. And it's like, no, not a good idea, right? And so we have to be the stronger person in that relationship and, and call it out when, when we notice that. And you have to be smart. Like, it's really great to be com that comfortable with someone. Like, that's beautiful. And that is what you want, especially in marriage. You want to yeah. be that comfortable. Um, and there's a reason that, like, we, at least in the Catholic Church, are so big on chastity and purity. And it's not mm -hmm. because we're old-fashioned and we're like, don't do that that's bad and that's right. gross, but it's because like when you are entering into that serious relationship, whether you're engaged or you are married, um, when you have that, that's been broken down and you, you've struggled with chastity and purity. I'm, I'm in no way saying that that means like you are never going to have a good relationship because that's not the truth. But I will say that it's really, really hard, um, for the other person in that relationship. Mm -hmm. So like for me, I didn't date before my husband. Um, and so going in, that was something he struggled with. And that like that, that was weighing on our marriage for a while because like I second guessed everything, like everything mm -hmm. that was happening. I always went in my head and I think girls do this more than guys, but it was like, has this happened with someone else? Has he said these things to somebody else? Has, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you just second guess. And, I, and again, like I love him dearly and I love him for all of his faults and everything he's gone through. He wouldn't be who he is. Um, so like if that's something you have struggled with, we're not telling you that like you're doomed, like it's right. never going to oh, happen. Yeah. Um, but it is important like to be comfortable, but to also like father said, know the signs. So yeah. if you know that like you watching a movie together with a blanket in in the bedroom isn't great, then don't do that. Right. Watch it with your mom. Because I don't know about you guys, I'm not going to be like trying to, you know, flirt and, she, and touch my boyfriend yeah. if my mom's sitting right and there. Your I don't do it with my cookies. husband. Your, your mom makes better cookies than your boyfriend. Too. That's true. Like, <laughs> that's true. Another thing, too, with <laughs> with chastity and purity is like um, it's a give and take kind of thing to like you're going to fall and um, it's recognizing that like when one of you falls, like the other one needs to pick you up mm -hmm. and um, vice versa. That's super important. Um in any, in any relationship. And, and, and when you're dating someone in, you know, you get to know them more and more, you're going to notice all their faults too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. And especially if they're more severe, right. If there's addictions, you know, it could be, it could be alcohol, it could be drugs, right. It could be, um, pornography, pornography right. Like you have to be willing to say, Hey, you know what, we got to talk about this and we got to get you the help you need. And especially in a dating relationship, you know, I think it, you're you're in fair game to say, hey, this has to change or we're not moving forward. Yeah. Right. Uh, going right off of that, like that's hard to do, too. And like you're if you're in that moment and then, you know, just trying to come up with the words to say, like, OK, this can't happen like this needs to stop. Um, like that's super hard, but that's super important to be that strong person and say, like, this is what I really want. Yeah. And you need to have that communication so that for, for me, that's like the key thing. Like if you communication, I've had so many teens come to me and say like, well, I can't tell my boyfriend that, or I can't tell my girlfriend that you can. Why? Yeah. Because yeah. if you can't, you, you shouldn't can. be dating them. Yeah. Like yeah. ultimately that's it. And you can't have those deep conversations yeah. in those moments. Like Lauren and father talked about, if you can't have a conversation with them about the easy stuff, like if you can't go to them and be like, I need to go to confession. I haven't gone in like a year five months, whatever. If you're uncomfortable saying that to them, how in the world are you going to be able to sit there and say like, Hey, I struggle with pornography and I want to get better. Yeah. Or, Hey, I want to be chased because if you can't confess like the little things and work together on those, then I promise you that when those moments come that you're faced with that, like, okay, do I stay pure or do I just let it happen? Because I, I don't want to say anything. You're going to let it happen and yeah. you're going to regret it. And this is going to sound weird, but like having easy conversations is easy. Like, yes, it's okay to start like a little simply and everything, but and like ease your way into it. But you need to have those deeper conversations and like get that stuff off right off the bat. 
And especially when we get into things like a, a purity and chastity, you know, having sex, things like that, like you really need to wait. And the reason is because you're worth the wait, right? Mm -hmm. We want you one day when you're married to truly celebrate, right? To have an awesome honeymoon, right? And when we realize is what we're saying on our wedding day, right? When we say, I promise to be faithful to you in good times and bad and sickness and health to love you and honor you all the days of my life, you can really mean it, right? And you can start living that then and you've, you've waited and that's a gift you can only give your future spouse, right? And, and it's important to remember if you've been through a breakup after you have slept with that person, okay, it is way harder. And it's not just because like, oh, I just loved them. Like that's not the reason, okay? It's because you've given a part of yourself to them and they were not ready to receive it okay. in the right way. And so now you feel broken. A part of you is lost and it takes a really long time to mend that. Like I, a really long time. So it's just easier and less messy if you wait till you find the person that like is going to stand in that church with you, is going to confess and, and, you know, give themselves to you fully in the sacrament of marriage in front of all your family and friends. Plus, then you get to hold them accountable. So when my husband does something <laughs> stupid, he doesn't get to just leave and disappear and be done with me. I can yell at him and he still has to come back home. And same with, the same with him. Like he can yell at me and I still have to go home and face him yeah. whether I want to or not, because divorce is not an option over yeah. stupid little things. Yeah. Um, and, and that's not the case in high school relationships. I see it so many times where you know, it's fine because I really love him or I really love her. So it's okay. But then like something stupid and petty happens and they're done. Like, and they come to youth group and I'm like, where's your boyfriend? Oh, we got in a fight and, and you're hurting. And I get that. But like, part of me wants to be like, I told you so like, you right. know, and I, yeah. I will never do that to you when you're hurting, but I will. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 While you're in confession. Um, but, but also no. too, but also too, no, yeah, if you do fall, you know, do come to the sacrament, let your priest know, let me know, yeah. whatever it may be, you know, and let's set up a time to go to confession, you know, and that's to uh, like, to have that on your soul, like be free of that and let the, let the Lord impart to you his mercy and forgiveness and never feel like you've done such an awful thing that you can't ask for God's mercy because he's always waiting there Super to forgive important. you. And, and yeah. know too that like, you can have those awkward, com like you can, you and your significant other can go sit down. Um, I can give you a list of priests that I know will not make it uncomfortable um, or will purposely make it uncomfortable. So it's funny, <laughs> but they will sit there and have that conversation with you. Um, I, I don't love having it, but I'll sit there and have a conversation with you about chastity with your significant other, because I believe so strongly about it. Um, and I know any youth minister in the area, any pastor, like even a priest that you're like, this is going to be so weird because he's old and I can't say things <laughs> like he wants to have those conversations with you, even if they're uncomfortable, because we want you guys to be dating in a healthy way, not in the way society is showing you, mm -hmm. but in a healthy way that the church promotes, because that is the goal of marriage. Like the church yeah. doesn't want you to not date. The church doesn't want you just to find someone off the street and be like, I think we like work out. So we're going to get married. <laughs> there's a reason mm -hmm. that there's like this whole thing with the sacrament that you, you meet with the priest and you go through like all this preparation so that like you are prepared to enter that sacrament knowing everything like your your spouse is an open book you talk about weird things before you get married so that you can address it so that when you get into marriage you're ready to go so we want you to be dating in a way that is starting that off already that you're already kind of open open books because otherwise when you sit down you get engaged and you get you know the beautiful pictures taken and it's like a whole gorgeous ring and you love telling the story but you start marriage prep and you realize you know nothing about that person mm -hmm. because that's yeah. not what your dating was yeah I'm glad you said that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, you know, and sitting down with couples, you know, preparing, and I love doing it. And be, part of it is, you know, is they're so eager and they're so happy, right? It's, which is awesome. And, but you really get to take a couple, right? And, you know, this is at the early stages, really, of the relationship together. God willing, we'll be married 60, 70, 80 years, right? And, but, and really have the opportunity to say, where is God in your relationship? And how can we, Help the two of you grow closer in that relationship with God so that when you're married, what people see in you is the love of God. When they encounter you, they see the love of mm -hmm. God, right? And that's something that's like contagious, right? And they're like, wow, what do they have that I don't? And it's the love of God. And they remind people of that each and every time they meet that couple. Hopefully that's the goal. Yeah. 
which means he needs to be in your relationship in high school. Because I promise Truth. that if God is not in your relationship, and I know this sounds churchy and like, oh my gosh, shut up, Athena. But I promise that if God's not in your relationship, it will not last because the things of this world don't last. And your love cannot be true if God's not a part of it. Because otherwise, it's really easy to walk away. And I think that's why divorce rates are so high in the U.S. Because it's really easy, if God's not in the center, to say, I'm done with you because you're a person with faults and I don't want a person with faults. Where if God's in the center, you can then look through this other lens of like, you're a person with faults, but I want to help you grow. Right? And that matters. Gosh, she must be married. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. We're getting, I think we're almost on five years. This is not, I'm getting, guys, I really am getting old. Um, But thank you for joining us today. Hopefully um, we, you heard some new things. If not, we refreshed your memory and you can kind of evaluate those um, relationships that you're in now, whether that's a friendship, friendship or dating. Um, And remember that if you are loving what you hear here, that was poor wording. If you're oh, loving what's happening here, here um, <laughs> this is what happens when Father Kid wakes us up early. <laughs> um, you can join Awaken Nation. Um, for the price of a cup of coffee, you can donate to us and help us keep this ministry going at awakencatholic.org slash donate. And then if you want to try a free month of premium, which will also benefit us here at um, Awaken Catholic, which is awesome, you can go to our website and follow the link to the Hollow app. So this is a really awesome Catholic meditation app. If you are a night owl and you like to think a lot at night like I do, this is really good. It helps you fall asleep. So even if you're praying to fall asleep, do it. Okay. Um, Thank you guys so much. And we will be back. We'll see you next time. See you guys. This show and all media on Awakened Catholic is made possible by the Awakened Nation and the Hollow app. The Awakened Nation is a community of people like you who support all things Awaken for as cheap as a cup of coffee a week and get access to exclusive content. Learn more by visiting awakencatholic.org slash donate. Hollow is the only audio guided Catholic prayer app focused on contemplative prayer and traditional Catholic meditation such as Lexio Divina, Daily Examine, and the Rosary. We here at Awaken all use Hollow every day and love it. To learn more or give it a try, visit hello.app slash awaken.